Hello, greetings, welcome to this service of Holy Communion of Eucharist for Pentecost. My name is Philip Hawthorne, I'm the Rector of the Benefice here and Lizzie, my wife, is behind the camera operating for us today. And you are welcome, wherever you are, whenever you are watching this. God unites us by the Holy Spirit, so we gather and we worship together. A couple of things before we start, if you haven't got an order of service and would like one, do go to our website, stephensbath.org.uk and you can download one from there or just enjoy hearing the words and joining in when you can. I also invite you to have bread and wine with you. So when it comes to that part of communion where we, we break bread and share bread and wine together, you might like to do that, remembering that you share it with everybody who is taking part in this service. If that doesn't feel comfortable, that's absolutely fine. But if you do want to, that would be great. Also, if you can have a candle with you as well, that would be good. Uh, this is the last week in our Easter season that we have the Paschal candle lit in our service. And there's a rather lovely piece of liturgy at the end uh, where we blow the candle out. So that would be good for you to join in with if you'd like to. Thrilled as ever that we have members of our church communities taking part in the service, uh, in readings and in prayers and in choice of hymns. Don't forget when we come to those bits that they're recorded outside so you'll hear the sounds of life going on in the background. Let's be still now before we worship together. Some words from our gospel. Jesus says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. So in our orders of service, we gather in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. If you have a candle with you, do light it with me. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord. And we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on a cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that this Jesus is Lord. And now with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. As we worship you in all the places we are, fill us with your spirit. As we listen to your word, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your presence within us, and between us. Fill us with your spirit as we long for your renewing. Fill us with your spirit. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Holy Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to God, who has prepared good things for the poor in spirit. Loving God, your Holy Spirit comes as fire, yet is so often tamed by our lukewarm lives. Lord, by your Spirit, forgive us and heal us. Lord, your Holy Spirit comes as a powerful wind, yet is so often contained by our prejudice and our lack of forgiveness. Lord, by your Spirit, forgive us and heal us. 
your Holy Spirit comes as a river, yet is so often limited by our refusal to know your love and to live it. Lord, by your Spirit, forgive us and heal us. May the God of power and of love forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. As forgiven people, we say the glory, the Gloria together, gloriously, let's say it. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for this Pentecost Sunday. Holy Spirit, promised by Christ, sent by God. Ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Pentecost reading from Acts is read for us by Sarah Wyatt from St Stephen. She's been involved in all sorts of things in the church for many, many years, and it's great that she can join us now to read for us. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with the new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Thank you so much, Sarah. I didn't even notice Sarah's dog, Willow, in the background at the beginning of that reading. Wonderful. Margaret Leach is going to read a gospel for us. Margaret's one of the people in our benefice who hasn't got access to the internet, so she hasn't been seeing any of these services so far. So it's really wonderful that she can contribute by reading the gospel for us. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you so much, Margaret. Let's pray together. Loving God, by your spirit, may these words I say be true to the words you give to us and lead us to live your life, living word. Amen. So, <laughs> we arrive at Pentecost. And it's been a long journey, hasn't it? Remember, way back in March, we were in the middle of Lent when we started these recorded services. We were in lockdown. And in Lent, we have that season marked by the purple colour in our wonderful Anglican uh, liturgical colours, or sackcloth. Then came Passion Tide and Holy Week, where we were coloured red, followed by Easter, of course, in white and gold. And the seven weeks of the Easter season the last of which is today. And we reflect on Jesus' resurrection appearances and his preparation to return to heaven. That brought us to Ascension, which was last week, and this season of Ascension to Pentecost called Thy Kingdom Come by the Church of England. And now it's the red of Pentecost, and tomorrow, Monday, it's the green of ordinary time. And that ordinary time stretches right through the summer, right the way to all saints. And the step, stop after that is Advent. It's a bit like a crest to run. We've had all this exciting downhill rush and then we're launched off the end into space, into ordinary time. We can't help feel that, well, maybe it feels a bit, oh, I don't know, domestic. Our reading was all about the arrival of the Holy Spirit. We have it each Pentecost from Acts. And the Gospel was about Jesus promising that arrival of the Spirit. And it says that it was the last day of the festival, and that was the festival of tabernacles, all about the Israelites dwelling in tents in the wilderness, remembering their journey with Moses in these temporary domestic arrangements. And Jesus makes this wonderful statement, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Out of the believer's heart. Isn't that wonderful? Except, well, Let's have a think about that for a moment. I hope you won't mind indulging me for a minute or so. As you know, what we have as our Bible is a translation. John's Gospel was thought to have been written in Greek and now it's translated into lots of languages and to lots of versions of those languages. I'd just like to show you briefly what Debbie and Jane and I sometimes do when we're preparing sermons to look back to the original text. It's a kind of linguistic detective investigation, if you like. And sometimes it can yield an interesting angle on which to preach. So let's have a look at that line again. Out of the believer's heart, we read. And here's the Greek with the literal translation below in capitals. That word heart in its original form meant literally 
belly or guts. The Greek word there is koilias. I'm pointing to it there. The belly or the guts at the time of writing was seen as the centre of a human being, where the life force or the emotions came from. In our context, it's been rendered as heart, as that's where we see the centre of our emotions, our sort of spiritual centre, if you like. And that's why the translation we have says heart and not belly. And I don't know about you, but do you think that makes heart sound much cleaner, a bit more maybe tasteful than guts, a bit more domestic? But it's even more interesting than that. Remember that bit earlier in John's Gospel where Nicodemus comes to Jesus as night, at night and Jesus explains about the spirit and being born again. And here's that bit in our translation. And you can see there that at the end, Nicodemus says, can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? If we look at that passage in the original Greek, it's really interesting. The word for womb is the same root, that Greek word koilias, could mean either. Out of the believer's womb has come living water. Suddenly we get a whole new image, something altogether more visceral, more gutsy. The heart is a wonderful thing, of course, and we have a heart for living God's love in the world. But here we can reflect on giving birth to God's love, giving birth to God's living water. We are only the temporary tabernacle of God's spirit. The spirit doesn't just stay with us, but flows through us, born into the world. In our discussions about opening the church buildings, as I mentioned last time, Many of us have been happen, uh, happy to remain like this for the time being, enjoying the difference and the refreshing newness of worshipping in our homes together. But, well, maybe that might also be seen as maybe a bit domestic. Well, I don't think so. Our homes are the places in which and from which we live from which we give birth to the Spirit into our world. Because lovely though our church buildings are, and they are lovely, we, the people, are the church. The Spirit and our intention to live as Spirit-filled Christians isn't confined to a building or to Sunday. Our living God's love in the world is not domestic. The Psalms say that God is a well of living water for us. But Jesus says it's we who are the well of living water for the world, giving birth to God's presence in the world. So the heart then, is it a weaker image perhaps? Again, I don't think so. John uses the image of water often in his gospel. And remember when Jesus died, or after Jesus had died, a spear pierced his side and blood and water flowed out. That's why we have wine and water in our Eucharist, in our communion together. When the heart is put under strain, it develops a protective layer of water, a sack that goes around it. And on the cross, Jesus' heart was just that. The beatings that he'd received, his carrying of his cross, the torture of the crucifixion would have put a huge strain on his heart. Out of Jesus' heart, we see the extent of his love in blood and in water. His giving of himself so that we might have life. 
and the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost is as a mighty wind, as a fire, as a powerful river. And the Spirit flows out from us, from where we are, flows from us into the world, not as a domesticated nice idea or a sugar-sweet religion, but a life that is born of the truth of the world, the blood and the water, the embracing of joy and wonder and the marvel of life, as well as the pain and the agony and the mystery too. Out of the pain and struggle of any birth, there is the potential for a flourishing of a new life. So may God, through us, empowered by the Spirit, give birth to hope and peace and all the love of heaven. Amen. So together, let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God our Creator, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God in Christ Jesus, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, three in one, eternally present and ever-loving. Amen. Now, Richard and Carolyn Frewer have been in Chalcombe for 25 years, they were telling me, and it's great that Richard can now lead us in our intercessions down by the Holy Well in Chalcombe's garden, which he designed. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire, enlighten with celestial fire. Thou, the anointing Spirit, art, who dost thy sevenfold gifts impart. Father, protect this wonderful valley and our church garden. Protect this and other holy wells that have given comfort and sustenance over millennia. This well is still visited by people from far and wide. We give thanks for its health-giving presence and that many, knowing its purity, collect the water to take home to their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, Help us to understand the deeper significance of the well. Using the words of Shelley, the fountains mingle with the river, the rivers with the ocean. The winds of heaven mix forever with a sweet emotion. Nothing in the world is single. All things by a law divine in one another mingle. Lord, hold us as thine. Like the mighty rushing wind that entered the room where the disciples were gathered, the water flowing into the pond from the depths of the earth is part of a continuum connecting the whole world and is part of every living creature in it. May your spirit, like the wind and the waves, stir all our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for Bishop Peter, we pray for Philip and Debbie, and Andrew and Jane, and for the work that they have done to make possible the continuation of services. Bless our church wardens and others who make their individual contributions. Father, we pray that services may soon return to our church buildings with all of us present. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask in faith for your support of all your priests and ministers of whatever denomination. Lord, give special protection to those caring for the sick. Here in Bath, we pray for our doctors, our nurses, ambulance crews, assistants, cleaners, and all helping to control the pandemic. Give strength and protection to the many thousands of ordinary people giving their time, their love, and their lives for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the royal family, and in particular, we pray for the Queen and the large number of her staff who have self and selflessly isolated away from their families to keep her safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your guidance on all government leaders. May their example be open and their decisions selfless in the interest of their countries and the wider world. We pray for the people of the United States as they move towards elections in November. Guide them to realize the importance of their country's steady leadership role in the world beyond their shores. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, protect all our friends in Hong Kong who fear that the guarantees of freedom under the 1997 agreement are being eroded. Little is heard at the moment about the continuing conflicts around the world. May this present health crisis cause nations to pause and rethink their political and environmental priorities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask for your protection on all families. For some, this has been a time of happy togetherness, but for many in cramped accommodation with no income and a little connection to the outside world. It is hardly bearable. Education has been badly disrupted, especially for those most in need. We pray for the reopening of schools so pressure can be diminished, so children may continue their studies, and so they can again enjoy the stimulus of their friends. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you may protect the lonely. Make us more aware that we can do a lot more to help them. Comfort and heal those who suffer in body, mind and spirit. Many of the elderly we know are frail and need support. Father, keep them safe. Bless them and all who care for them. Make their carers patient and compassionate and help them to understand the importance of their vocation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Within our church communities, we pray in love for Jean, Paul and Rhys, Muriel Bird, Andrew Avramenko and Rebecca. We remember the families of those who have recently died and we ask you to, to comfort them. Pamela Endel, married in Chalcombe in 1941. Steve Rogers, Betty Wheelock, Helena Avramenko. Let us, in a moment of silence, remember others of our friends and relations in need of our prayers.
finally, rejoicing in St. Mary, St. Stephen, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Richard. Oh, if you haven't been to the, the Holy Well since lockdown, I bet you can't wait to get back there. It's wonderful. Now we share the peace together. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us as a pledge of what is to come. He has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Our hymn now is chosen by Sue Sloman, who's been so involved in Chalkham for so many years. And she loves this hymn. It was written by Bianco da Siena, and she said that reminds her of Italy, which she loves. Reminds us of the struggles that Italy has had uh, during the coronavirus. Uh, and also how much we draw on Italian culture. And the music is called Down Ampney, which is not far from here and reminds us of the wonderful rural setting of Chalkham. Let's enjoy singing this hymn together.
This is the table, not of the church, but of God. It is to be made ready for those who love God and who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, not because I invite you, it is God, and it is God's will that you who want God should meet God here. Blessed be God forever. Beloved, the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks that after he had ascended far above all heavens and was seated at the right hand of your majesty, he sent forth upon the universal church your holy and life-giving spirit, that through his glorious power the joy of the everlasting gospel might go forth into all the world. And so we gladly thank you, and with saints and angels we praise you, and we say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Make sure you have your bread and wine ready if you have them. We praise and bless you, loving God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the promise of God's unfailing love, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So God of all goodness, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. And bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of all life. Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy and peace and compassion will be born into all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St Mary, St Stephen and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So together we pray with confidence as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and now lives for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, broken for you. blood of Christ shed for you. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of eternal life. Open our lips by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We're going to do things slightly differently in order from the order of service, so a blessing for us. May the peace of Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer and abiding spirit, be with you and remain with you and all you love, pray for, miss and remember in this moment and for always. Amen. A few notices before we sing our final hymn together then we'll have that last bit of liturgy together as the as the closing of our worship together it's been great i had a, a lovely few days off uh, with, the, with the family it was been wonderful so thank you for your prayers debbie's off for a few days now so we pray for her that she may come back refreshed ready to lead us next sunday in trinity sunday and i'm really thrilled that jane ho is going to be preaching for us next week a continued thanks to all who are helping us get our live stream services and uh, recordings online, uh, Linda and Andrew, of course Lizzie for filming, and both our families for allowing their houses, ho our homes to be part television studio, part church, as well as a house and a home. Thank you to you and thank you to all our PCCs, church wardens, who are looking after our church buildings and all the other things that go towards uh, being church for us. That's great, thank you to you. Our last, him it has been chosen by Rita Clare, Rita and Peter, members of St Stephen's Church, they give so much to the church community there and I'm thrilled that they we're going to sing now Rita's favourite hymn.
what a wonderful hymn to sing on this Pentecost Sunday. And so we come to the last part of our service where we blow out the Paschal candle. It's been a light all through the Easter season and now we blow it out for the last time. And although the light disappears, it's extinguished, we know that the light of Christ lives on in us by the Spirit. So if you've got your candle lit, ready, we'll blow those out together in a moment. Blessed are you, sovereign God, overflowing in love. With Pentecost dawns the age of the Spirit. Now the flame of heaven rests on every believer, strong and weak, women and men, tell out your word. The young receive visions, the old receive dreams. With the new wine of the Spirit, they proclaim your reign of love. Amid the birth pangs of the new creation, the way of light is made known. Source of freedom, giver of life, blessed are you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. For 50 days we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty acts and we have prayed that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead might be at work in us. As part of God's church here in Chalcombe and Lansdowne and wherever we live, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting God to be your guide? By the Spirit's power we will. Will you dare to embrace each other in the spirit and grow together in love? By the spirit's enabling, we will. Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each other in need? By the spirit's joy, we will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your hearts beat with the longings of God? By the spirit's mercy, we will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places? By the Spirit's peace, we will. Friends, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Today, we have remembered the coming of God's power on the disciples and we invite that same spirit to drive us out into the wild places of the world. Filled with the spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>